Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining me on our Beat the Heat with Cool Summer Treats virtual cooking class. I am Charlotte, so glad you guys made it. And with me, as always, is the wonderful, talented, and knowledgeable Scott Tompkins. Oh, what an intro. Do you well, like thanks. that? Thanks. Thanks, Chef. Of course. I always like that. I love, I love when uh, we can bend the truth a little bit. Nope. <laughs> nope. I mean, you are... I mean, <laughs> always here as usual and you it's are true. knowledgeable. That's true. <laughs> um, uh, I am super glad everyone has joined us today. So it, we are moving into the summertime and the temperatures are rising. And I thought that we would do some fun things that reminded me of summertime and that are nice and refreshing and cooling. So the menu for this evening is really kind of fun and very cool. It's a froze watermelon frosé and we are going to do a really nice mint simple syrup to go with that so utilizing some fresh um, herbs there we are going to make a creme fresh ice cream so summertime always reminds me of um, cold treats frozen frozen treats but also homemade ice cream and um, I grew up making homemade ice cream all the time with like that big thing with the ice and the rock salt and the thing so we're gonna do a really nice um, ice cream I'm excited about it. And a strawberry beet salad um, with some watermelon. And if you have this recipe in front of you, you've probably noticed that it has burrata in it. Um, I truly believe it's because Scott Tompkins and I just can't, it's, it's beets and burrata, they're a thing. They're, they're a thing, it's a match made in heaven, I'm a fan. I'm brought on everything. I'm like, I'm like, if you've got a salad, you may as well throw some brata right? on there because you need some kind of cheese. I mean, I mean, we said it earlier, if fresh mozzarella is good, then burrata has to be better, right? You got that right. And truth. <laughs> Hashtag truth, Hashtag chef. truth. And so um, in addition to that, I wanted to showcase some more fresh herbs. So we are going to do a fresh oregano and mint vinaigrette. Big fan of um, like vinaigrettes at home. They're very, very easy to make. Uh, and this one utilizes so many different fresh herbs. So the backbone of this one is gonna be some basil, but it's got fresh oregano and this like hit of mint that just balances out, balances it out beautifully. I mean, this could go on like a, like a pasta dish or it could be a marinade for um, chicken, shrimp, whatever. But on this salad, so wonderful. And again, all those fresh herbs. Um, so That's let's a good get pairing you did. That's a good pairing. So I like that. I'm, I'm excited about it, right? So like beat the heat with cool summer treats, right? So frozen things. And I think like watermelon and strawberries are like peak peak season for me right now. Like or like I just can't get the strawberries are so sweet and beautiful and the watermelons are amazing. I'm here yeah. for it. The, you walk into an H-E-B right now, you're going to see yes. palette drops of these great watermelons, gigantic ones. Will you tell your story to the, so, the folks at home yes, about your Yes, really quickly. So, um, I picked a 20-pound watermelon um, from the H-E-B, and while I was standing out there, I was picking up all the watermelons, right? I was picking up, and I was turning them over, and I was looking at them, and I was like, no, that's not it. And then I'd pick up another one, and people were kind of looking at me, you know, what, 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 what are you doing, right? Like, maybe I had some trick, but I do have a trick to pick the the best watermelon and I actually learned this from Scott Tompkins but when you're picking a watermelon um, you want to find a watermelon that looks heavy for its size right so it looks really really big and heavy um, or just it feels heavy for its size you want a watermelon that has a really good yellow spot right so like um, that means it's been sitting out in that sun and it's been soaking up all that wonderful uh, water and sun and then you don't want it to be a symmetrical watermelon right so um, that means that there's something about it that's it's big and it's been sitting there hanging out ready to be ready to be picked and that's the watermelon for you so as I was doing this right and I'm just like Tompkins touches every avocado in the HEB every I avocado. have touched every watermelon and I'm picking them up right and I'm moving them over and I'm picking them up and people start are start standing around like what, what are you doing and I I taught a little impromptu how to pick a watermelon class have you ever seen people thump them yeah, I don't, I, I, I've never been a thumper. I don't really understand. I, I don't either. An old, I, they, I don't know if it works. I cannot prove or disprove that it works or doesn't work. It's kind of like, you know. But I mean, they have like watermelon thumps, right? Yeah. Like that's the thing. Like, to, well, you, like to, you thump bread, like good bread. You, I don't you know. You thump the bread. There's like a sound to it. But Maybe there's a, um, our three rules have never let me down. 
and it didn't let me down this time. And I had this giant watermelon. I carried this giant, like, 20-pound watermelon. Maybe the thumping is like a sonar. Like, you thump it, okay. and it hits the All wall right. of the watermelon and reverberates back. All Maybe right. there's highly in tune people can do that. I'm not a highly in tune person, so. Uh, uh, neither am I. Neither am I. I would not I. be able to thump it and pick one. Okay, really quickly, guys, um, to get us started, we're going to jump right in. We are going to start with our um, mint simple syrup. And it's really just that. I mean, it's super simple. To make a simple syrup, you just want to do equal parts water to sugar. And then we're going to reduce that by half on a low simmer, right? So I've got a cup of water in here. I'm going to add a cup of sugar. And we're going to a great question here from Carol. Ahead. Carol, I love that you are first in the chat. She asked, can we use a yellow meat watermelon? I don't see why you couldn't. Yeah, I like that. Carol, I don't see why you couldn't. Yellow meat works just as well. There will be some color, like so. Some of the um, the the color from the strawberry and the beet um, will bleed into it, but I bet it makes for a really unique, like tie dyed sort of like. I bet it looks really beautiful. So um, we're just gonna stir this to dissolve it a little bit, and I've got medium high flame. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw in some mint some fresh directly mint. into this and i've got some fresh mint right so here chef to go back to the thumping yes. the watermelon debacle pam yes. solved it the deep sound when thumping means it's juicy ah okay okay pam pam thank you for being here we appreciate that all right so just a bunch of mint and i'm going to throw this directly in there give it a stir and what happens is as this steeps the like that mint, like the volatile compounds in the mint sort of dissolve themselves into, um, into the simple syrup. And then you have this really, 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 really flavorful, flavorful guy. All right. So I'll let me ask Jeff, if you wanted to do something that if you want to make it, obviously you can do a regular simple syrup to add yes. to like your ice here or whatever, but could you also infuse other flavors at this point into it? Yes, great question. Absolutely, so you could. You absolutely could. Um, you could do, um, if, let's say, oh my God, I totally drew a blank. So let's say you wanted to do um, lemon and lavender, right? So you would do some lemon juice, a little bit of the rind, and then a few, um, you know, lavender buds, right? And then that would be great to put on a cake or an icing or in a, you know, craft cocktail, if you would. You could do, um, if you wanted to make a spicy, um, simple syrup for a margarita or a paloma or something like that, you could do grapefruit and jalapeno. So they're really great. Like they just add it like a different element of um, flavor, something you could layer in. And they hold in the fridge for up to a week and they're, they're perfect. You so can, very, very yeah. customizable. Absolutely. Um, so the next thing that we are going to do is we are going to start our ice cream. And so um, what makes this ice cream different is that we are going to make a custard, meaning we're going to use um, egg yolks in this, uh, in this recipe. Um, also the addition of creme fraiche. And um, just so um, for a couple of folks out there, for people that want to know what creme fraiche is, creme fraiche is like, imagine sour cream. Um, so it's cultured, it has a little bit of that tang. So creme fraiche is like cultured um, heavy cream. So it's a little bit thicker, has a little, it's a little um, richer. It's like the burrata of the mozzarella, right? It's like, it's, it's the like burrata why, like you could use sour cream. the mozzarella, right? this just has right? more fat, a little more okay. flavor. Okay, I like it, sour, but I like it's really it, delicious. I like it. Um, a couple of things you're gonna need to start, uh, before we start making our ice cream, is you're going to need a couple of bowls. I like to get all my ingredients, my mise en place, before we do ice cream, because once you start making a custard, uh, you don't want to walk away from it, right? So when you're using egg yolks um, and heat, you always want to be very careful and you want to stay with it, almost like you're babysitting it, because um, it could go south really quick and you could get scrambled eggs, and we're not, we don't want True. that, right? So, Chef, uh, while you walked away, uh, Rob got a great shot of some of the fantastic stuff you found at HB. Will you describe some of the, the fantastic watermelon? My things? And the, the glass of, I don't even know, it looks like a chalice of some kind that maybe so like. So I felt pineapple. we have like, our GM section is super fun, right? And so I have a little coupe glass. So a cocktail glass, which is fantastic for either ice cream or for our frosé, just great for any sort of craft cocktail. Um, I found these little plastic um, watermelon bowls that would be great for just giant chunks of watermelon um, or ice cream. And then I found this guy, um, and I'm obsessed with it. And it's a strawberry or a red pineapple or whatever, but it has a lid, Sparkly and it has a swirly straw, and I'm here for it, and I love it, and it's the best. 
All right. And that's, that one's not for sharing. That's a no, one that's size, like you no. get one, I get one. Yes, yes. Um, but let's get back into our ice cream. So um, for our um, custard, we're gonna use our ice cream. We're gonna use two cups of heavy cream, chilled. You wanna make sure everything's, it doesn't actually matter because we're gonna heat it up. So scratch that. But we're gonna do two cream. cups of heavy cream and we're gonna use buttermilk. I'm gonna add this. You get that um, nice acid. So if you wanted yes. to make your own creme fraiche, you, I mean, again, this is not, not a pasteurized thing. Yeah. Once you're done, obviously the milk and cream is pasteurized, yep. but if you were gonna do it, you'd take a, a quart of heavy cream and right. you add a quarter cup of buttermilk and let okay. it sit in a warm place for about two days. If that freaks you out, just go buy the Alouette creme fraiche. There you <laughs> go, me. right? I like homemade creme fraiche. Um, if you're gonna make homemade creme fraiche, it's totally fine because we heat it up anyway, so right. it wouldn't it wouldn't matter. But you don't lose that flavor, excuse me, which is really cool. So um, to our uh, dairy, we're gonna add half um, of the sugar. So about the recipe is one cup, so we're gonna add half a cup into here. I want and you to know I got really excited for a second, chef, because I thought that was salt, and I was like, well, that's maybe a little too much salt. <laughs> but it's sugar. Aggressive. You got it in the sugar bowl. That's right. That's um, ooh, this is simmering quite nicely. Not that I would ever question how much salt you're putting in it, because I know it would work whatever the outcome. I appreciate Full the trust. faith. Full trust. Full um, trust. And I'm going to do a vanilla bean. Oh. I'm not close. <laughs> instead, of a, instead of vanilla bean. You or got it. I want you to breathe deep in your core, and then I want you to twist. Breathe deep and twist. Don't see this. <laughs> this We're going to edit this out, All right? Core. You got this. Okay. There it is. You got it. So, ah, we did it. Okay. Ah. Vanilla bean. Here it is. I got it. I wish I sh in rehearsal, I should have opened this. Um, my, you know, whoops. So vanilla bean, um, you can use vanilla extract um, if you like, or you can use vanilla bean paste, but I really like to use the actual um, bean itself, especially for... Um, the ice cream, I like to see those little flecks in yeah, there. I like, gotta, I like says, the way it looks. It speaks vanilla. It to does. Your eyes. It really, really does. All right. So, um, really simply, to um, to take out the seeds with a paring knife, you just want to gently score the top of the pod like this. Just split it in half. And then split it in half, right? You can open it up with your hands. And then what I do is I take the back of the knife, not the blade part, but the back, and I scrape it in both directions. I turn it around and then I scrape it in the other direction. Did y'all see like, how that? looks like the wet coffee. Oh, we can see it because Rob's got a killer perfect, angle on the vanilla perfect, beans. Perfect, perfect angle. shot. So um, I'm just gonna put this into our um, cream and I actually um, save some from the other. Now, um, you can definitely um, use, so some people will use the pod um, and put that into the cream and steep it with um, the sugar and the, the buttermilk and really extract some more flavor. Um, definitely do it that way. But what I like to do with these guys is stick them in sugar. So I'll put them in my sugar jar at home and it really like, it leaves this really like beautiful like vanilla essence. Um, these guys are expensive, vanilla bean are expensive. So I like to utilize it um, as much as I can. Um, you could put them in um, bourbon, whiskey, maple syrup, stuff like that but definitely save them. So I've got everything together. I've got our, all, most of our dairy in here and I'm gonna add it to a heavy bottom sauce pot. And it's really, this is really important. Um, you wanna use, oh, let me get my sugar out. You wanna use a heavy bottom um, pot when you are doing anything with, um, when you're making a custard you want to bring everything up to temperature slowly and at a consistent temperature because you don't want to scorch anything or curdle um, or scramble anything. Yeah, a thin aluminum pot would cause it to burn yeah. a little faster versus a thick, so yeah. So I'm just going to give this a, a quick stir thick. to bring it all together. Look at and your I've got medium syrup. high your, heat. Your mint simple syrup looks great in the shot next to you. Ooh, doesn't it look pretty? You can start to see it sort of turned a nice, really, a, a nice green. You could do this like a mojito, a Moscow mule, lemonade, iced tea. I was just going to say, like, for uh, we sell, obviously, at HEB, we sell that uh, simple syrup, like the sugar in the raw. Which yeah. It's like, okay, great, you can add to whatever. But this way, number one, you're showing it how to make it from scratch. Number two, you're also allowing somebody to go, if I want to make a mint lemonade, if I want to make an orange lemonade, like, you could steep yeah. all that stuff in the simple syrup, and you've got, boom. All I'm right. excited about that. While Sugar our, excites me. While our cream um, is starting to steep, we're going to beat our egg yolks. Um, 
when you're separating egg yolks, like for this, like if you get a little bit of white in there, it's no big deal. It's not like, um, you know, where we're beating um, or whipping egg whites and we need to be, um, it could have no yolk in it. So it's all right, no big deal. Not a perfect science. Um, I'm gonna add in the remaining sugar, so about a half a cup of sugar into here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna beat them together until they become a pale yellow. And what we're doing is we are adding in air, right? So we are um, incorporating more air. We are getting the egg yolks ready for that um, hot cream so it doesn't um, scramble. I'm gonna come over here and stand with my... Look at you, you're not walking away. I don't wanna walk away, I don't wanna, don't wanna lose it. it. I wanna tell you that what you're doing with the yolks and the sugar is one of my most favorite things in the world to whisk because I love to watch the sugar eventually kind of poke holes and aerate yes. the yolk and it becomes this really light and like ribbony. Also, I just, I like to whisk. I'm just a whisk, I'm a whisker. You kind of do like to whisk. I feel like it's your thing. It's a challenge. It's, you know, it's like So I'm gonna something. come back over here so you guys can see. So you can see the color that it's yes, changed. Yes, Carol, you can right? use a mixer. Carol's saying you can use a mixer. You Absolutely. Don't have to use. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Carol, I feel like you probably don't have like, my, like my, my biceps are tired now. Yeah, you're pretty yoked, no, no I doubt. I like that you work, are yoked. You smarter, got the... not harder. <laughs> All right, so now um, that we've done that, we've incorporated our sugar, I'm gonna add in the creme fraiche straight to this guy. Can y'all see that? Oh my God, it's so pretty. Also wanna say that whisking is part of our, uh, our culinary workout that we do yes. uh, in the summertime. We like to go big on whisking everything because it just kind of helps you get in shape. So Carol, you can always use that as part of your workout routine. You're welcome for that little uh, tidbit. I don't yeah, know if like your trainer- Yeah, like my heart rate's up right your now. Your trainer may not agree with that, but you know. All right. So I've got our egg, sugar, and creme fraiche mixture right here. We, are, we wanna bring this, um, our buttermilk, cream, vanilla, this guy, to about, to about 160, right? And the reason why we want to steep this is not only are we developing flavor, not only are we dissolving the sugar, but we're going to, um, heating up the dairy prevents sort of a um, grainy or crystallization when you're making um, the ice cream. And also we're gonna cook the egg ever so slightly in the bowl before we put it back into the pan. All right. Let's see. I like what's happening. I'm gonna whisk it just a little bit to break up some of our vanilla bean. Tempering, the tempering step for eggs is so, uh, I think it can be intimidating because if you do go too fast, obviously you can curl the eggs, which you don't wanna do, but it's actually easier than you think. And I think what you're about to do makes it much easier for folks to kind of understand how fast can you actually temper into egg yolks without a curdling. Yes, and I've actually, so if you can see right around the edges where you start to see a little bit of simmering happening, can y'all, I don't know if y'all can see that, um, right around there, we're, we're getting right about there. I don't have a thermometer on me, but I can tell you it's just about there. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna give it a quick little whisk. We don't wanna scorch it. We wanna make sure that Scorch milk has a specific taste to it, and we're not, we don't want to do that. We just want to steep it. Different application. And scald a little bit. And then, I'm not left-handed, so y'all bear with me. What we're going to do is we're going to temper this hot liquid into the egg and creme fraiche mixture. Um, very similar to when we made like the, um, the pudding, the banana pudding. I can tell you're, you're at the right temperature too, chef, because your sauce is nappe. No. Yes, there we go. Okay. Back of your spoon. So now what we're gonna do is we are going to, I like that culinary term, chef. I'm not left-handed. I'm gonna slowly add in one ladle at a time the hot mixture into the cold, slowly bringing these egg yolks up to a temperature. Yeah, and you're just looking to stabilize them really, right? You're just yep. trying to like, just get them to the, the same temperature so that when exactly. you pour it back in, they're not gonna seize up. And you can see all those really pretty flecks of vanilla, so pretty. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take very same mixture and I'm going to slowly whisk it 
back into that hot liquid and I've turned off the heat. Whisk it in. So the ambient temperature of the custard, which is probably around 170 or yep. so, is just gonna slowly. This way the egg can incorporate, emulsify into the remaining cream without curdling or scrambling. And we're gonna get a really, really beautiful, smooth, rich ice cream. I'm gonna turn the heat back on Okay, this is when you really don't want to walk away. All right, yeah. like just dairy on a stove. Pro you definitely tip, don't want to walk away. Don't walk away. All right, I'm gonna switch from a whisk to a spatula, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stand here, and I'm going to continually stir gently. And what I'm doing basically is like churning, right? I'm scraping off um, the custard from the side of the pan, from the side of the pot, and from the bottom. Man, this is a really hot, really I feel hot. Like making this is cathartic. You know what I mean? Like, there's a catharsis to this, and trying to like just standing some, just kind of slowly whisking something and slowly it is. Like, monitoring it's like, something. That's so like a. If you've ever made like creme anglaise, which is essentially what we're doing, right? Um, or pastry cream or pudding, and you screwed it up and it curdled on you, um, it's like. It's disappointing, right? But when you do it right, when you master it, it is. It's like, I did, th I did this. I know how to do this. I tempered some eggs. And it's sort of like, it's a good time. To this is a good time to like meditate, like right? while you're doing this on the stove. Of course, that's granted. You don't have, you know, all the kids this running looks, around screaming, telling you that where's dinner? And you're trying to where's slowly. Where's right? And <laughs> this is definitely like. Come on, Glaze. <laughs> but you know, if you can, you know, it's a great time you to take can. the time to meditate. <laughs> Right, it is. We're being mindful right now. We're not necessarily meditating. We're being mindful. So you can do it at a higher temperature if you want to speed the process. You're just going to, you know, run the risk of um, curdling or breaking it. Yeah. Coagulation if you go, of the eggs. If you, don't, if you don't bring it to a high enough temperature, you get crystallization or ice crystals in your ice cream. And if you don't... Um, if you, if you take it too high, your ice cream can um, be like gritty or grainy because the fat begins to separate out. And what we're looking for is about 185. We don't need to bring it to a boil. Um, so really 180 to 190, but 185 is really good. And what you'll notice and what we're looking for right now, if you don't have a thermometer, we're gonna look for visual cues. And the visual cues that we're looking for is um, a sheen. So it has a nice shine to it. Um, and you can start to see there's uh, not so many bubbles on top, not so much foam, but uh, a sheen. And then also a ribbon effect, right? So like when you stir something, and, and the way I describe it is think of a boat on a lake, right? Um, and behind the boat is a wake. And that's sort of what happens as you um, stir this. When the spatula moves through the sauce, it, um, it creates a sort of wake behind it. This is so hot. Yeah, and I love that. It's just the, the slow thickening from the eggs. And from the, the eggs, yes. We are using eggs as our thickener. So now, just like you did when you made the pudding, you did something similar, but you added cornstarch to yes. it, and you brought it to a boil so that you could activate it, right? That's kind yes. of the... Yes, great point. So when you're making, when you're making pudding, right, and you're, um, like with the banana pudding, we used cornstarch as a thickener, as, in addition to our... Um, our egg yolks, but you need to heat cornstarch to like to one to, or 212 in order for it to activate or become like gelatinized and thicken. This is what's cool because I'm, you know, as, as I've, yes, I've been able to watch every single class we've done because mostly I've been a part of them and I've actually seen it live. But it's, what's really cool is to our customers and clients is really being able to see and our students is to be able to kind of watch the, the transition of how different sauces that they've learned to make into a pudding can be made into an ice yes. cream, can be made into a dessert sauce. Like there's all these really cool things that you can kind of start to tie back together in your kind of little culinary tool book, as it were. So the culinary term, um, what, the French culinary term, nappe, right, or to coat the back of a spoon. If I were to take a wooden spoon and dip this in there, it would, it would rest on the spoon without, um, without, kind of running off or being drippy. We're actually right there. I can start to see we've got some, like, it's becoming more viscous. We've got the sheen. We've got that ribbon effect. And I don't want it to boil, so I'm going to turn this guy off. 
And it'll definitely, right, Chef, it'll cook a little more while it's kind of cooling down as you're kind of cooling. It it's will, kind of thicken up a little absolutely. more. Absolutely. Um, so now what I'm going to do, I've put the bowl, our original bowl, into an ice bath, and this is really hot. Now I'm going to pour in our custard through the sieve. Our sieve is sort of our... Um, insurance policy? Insurance policy, <laughs> right? Like, just in case we have a little bit of coagulation or there's any, like, anything left... Um, any debris from, that's not supposed yeah, to be Yeah, from, there. like, the vanilla bean. But if you look in this pot, you can see, like, there's no scorching in there, right? We didn't burn anything. Yeah, so no it eggs got curdled. No, right? So I feel really confident and good about that. I'm just going to give this a tap. And in this, and I'll move this right over here so you can see, you can see some of like the, um, the pith or some of the meat from the vanilla bean. And that's, you know, discoloration. We don't necessarily want that into our ice cream. Now, um, at this point, what we're gonna do, we want to stop the cooking process, right? So we don't want it to go any higher than this, but also we want to chill this, um, this sauce. We wanna chill it so that when we do freeze it, that um, A, it freezes faster, and B, um, we get a more even um, freeze, and the, the slower it freezes or the more consistently it freezes, um, the better eating experience you get, so like the less grit yeah. and the less crystallization. I also wanna point out the fact that you are, uh, you're cooling down your ice cream in a kitchen and table borosilicate glass bowl Borosilicate, not only fun to say, but is a fantastic vessel to use when cooling creme anglaise. When cooling creme anglaise, <laughs> it is. When You're absolutely right. When cooling creme anglaise, must, one, one must use a nice borosilicate Thermal bowl. dynamic. Let's not go crazy. <laughs> you had me at borosilicate. It just means that you can heat it up. You can take it from one extreme um, temperature to the next without it exploding. It's awesome. All right, so we're gonna continue. You would continue to do this until this came up to room temperature. And I'm gonna show you what this looks like um, when we're done or when it's cool. I have some in here. It's beautiful and I love it when things come together like this. So I'm going to come Thanks right here. Thanks to the ability we have in our kitchens to stop and speed up time, we have a creme anglaise done. All Only right. here can we do that. Um, so you can see this. So you can see how thick this is. Oh, yeah. You can see that yeah. beautiful pale color. Um, this is gorgeous, right? And this right now with like a piece of pound cake and some strawberries yeah. is like game on. That's all you really need. Now, um, just, just let so over you, your fruit. Oh, right? Man. It's This is perfect. Just so you know, like this right here is a thicker creme anglaise because we used that um, creme fraiche, right? So if you were going to make one out of, um, like without it, it wouldn't be quite as thick. But this is beautiful and it looks like velvet. So this is nice and cold. At this point, you would add this into your ice cream machine. So whatever one you have at home um, and set it to um, the appropriate manufacturer's directions to make ice cream. If you do not have an ice cream machine, um, I use a loaf pan quite often at home and I put it in the, put it in the freezer before I, um, before I add in the creme anglaise so that it, it's all cold around all the edges. And then I just put a piece of parchment paper on it and put it into um, the freezer. Every 30 minutes or so, I may go and stir it just to get like the right consistency. But um, because we've made the custard base and we have the egg yolks and all of that wonderful fat, Smooth, just doing creamy. it this way, you will still get a wonderful eating experience. So that's Chef, just something. Chef, we got a question. Yes, go ahead. When you're, while you're pointing in there, uh, Courtney had asked, is this a good recipe to use as a base? Like, could you make other ice creams from this ice cream? Will you talk a little bit about that? Yes, yes, I will. So this is a perfect base for anything that you, um, flavoring that you wanted to do. So like we could add, um, if you wanted to add any flavoring, this would be a good time to do it. Um, for example, like if you wanted to make chocolate ice cream, right? So this is the point where we would add, um, like when it was still warm, you would want to add in your melted chocolate while it was still warm, right? Uh, if you wanted to do any mix-ins, um, so for example, you wanted to do Reese's peanut butter cups or um, something like that. Cookies and cream. Cookies and cream. You would wait until your ice cream is almost frozen before you added those things in, right? Fold so, them in so and then you would mix those in. So you um, almost to the point where it's like really thick, thick pudding. That's when you would add in those mix-ins. You could actually at that point take like hot melted chocolate and drizzle it in and get like a chocolate chip kind of thing. 
Uh, Carol asks, could you add coconut rum and fresh pineapple? Uh, yes, you can. And Carol, I'm on my way to your house. I was going to say, Carol, what time uh, are you expecting company? Because you have about so, uh, 30 um, people that are going to head over. We got this thing at... Um, I picked 6.30. Up the, she said 6.30. Six, perfect. Done. Okay. Perfect. So um, <laughs> HEB sells this Dash, um, like, My Pine ice cream maker for 20 bucks. Um, I love this thing. Uh, I haven't actually, full disclosure, haven't used it yet, but I'm... But um, we're about to now. It's very easy. You would just use the base that we made just now. You would scoop. Um, I did read the directions. I can do that. We're going to scoop in one cup. I'm excited to be on a part of, of this. the voyage of the. <laughs> the maiden voyage of this. Okay. Machine. If I break it, like you know, hey, it happens, right? That's okay. So um, this guy's frozen, and then it has this guy right here. It has this. A little paddle. Here's the paddle. This is the paddle attachment. I have such high hopes for this thing. So to do I. Because if okay. that's the case, I'm going to be making ice cream. All the time, day. right? So 40 bucks, you get two. You have two kids. Both kids get to make their own ice cream, and then they get to put all their own fun stuff in it. All right, I'm going to turn this guy on, and I'm going to leave it over here for a little while and see what happens. We'll come back and visit this guy in a minute, all right? I'm going to set this aside, do a quick cleanup. Get ready for our vinaigrette for our salad. Is anybody making creme anglaise right now? Anybody, anybody? Anybody, anybody? No? Does anybody have one of those old school, um, one of those old school ice cream makers that's like out of wood where you have to put all the salt and like stuff like that in there? Carol's got a great question, Chef. Okay. I, gotta, I, I have my thoughts on it. She said, would you add the rum after the cooking phase? And my thought is, if you want the kids to be able to have the, the rum, if you don't, it doesn't really matter, I don't think. But if you do add it before, you could cook the alcohol off. But if it doesn't really matter, you could just add it afterward. And you could just have an alcohol. I mean, they have those alcohol ice creams now. I don't know if you've seen those. The you know what? So you could ones, do so. like, I need a bigger juicer. You could do like the rum flavoring, yes, if you wanted the kids to do. No, no, um, Charlotte, we're going over to Carol's house. She's going to do full rum, not rum okay, flavoring. Yeah, we're going then, full um, coconut rum. Am I wrong, Carol? Back me up. So I would do, I don't know the answer to that. I'm full disclosure. I feel like it depends if you want to cook the alcohol out, yeah. right? Like you want to. I think, yeah. So I think you would add in the alcohol when you add in, when you're scalding the milk. Yeah. Otherwise, Carol, if we're going to do a tipsy after ice cream. After you scald the milk. No, after. <laughs> Carol, <laughs> stand by. We're going to find out the answer. Are that you sounds making... like we need to do a little R&D test on that. That's yeah. what it sounds like to me. I don't know the answer. I wish I had the answer for you on that one. But I don't want to tell you the wrong answer, and then you do it, and then I told you the wrong answer. Okay, so fresh oregano and mint vinaigrette. Um, a vinaigrette is three to one, oil to acid. The acid for our vinaigrette is um, lemon juice. Is a juicy lemon. So we got about a quarter cup of lemon juice or the juice of one giant lemon. Um, we are one going to lemon. put in a little bit of Dijon mustard, so about a teaspoon. So our, um, how do you like that? Huh? How do you like that? <laughs> Um, I do, you know what's funny? I do our, that all the time. Wrong spoon for the wrong job. So our emulsifiers are Dijon and some garlic. We're also going to add in so many fresh herbs to this, and I'm super, super excited about this. Um, I can't take all the credit for this recipe. I, this is a Scott Tompkins recipe, and I use it all the time. I use it all the time um, because... I like that you're, you're doing what we talk about a lot, which is what you're customizing to fit what you want to serve it with. Yes. So you're customizing Yes. It. Um, so Scott Tompkins, um, his claim to fame is salt, <laughs> touching all the avocados in HEB and um, using quite a bit of aromatics, a little more than my personal taste. So he uses a lot yes. of garlic and um, a lot of shallot. But I don't want so much of that. I really, what I'm after in this recipe is the herbs. So I'm going to do one clove of garlic. One clove, exactly. And, or if you want to just leave out totally the garlic you always could if you're you trying could to do omit the garlic fruity, if you don't want to have something that's a little more aromatic yeah. you could totally do that but i'm going to do just one guy right i think one should do it one big guy 
fresh garlic. I put in the garlic, honestly, because I worry about vampires where I live, so I do oh, a lot of yes, garlic. Naturally. If you don't yes. have to worry about vampires, you yes. can maybe lessen the Outside garlic. Outside the loop, all the vampires. To each his, to yeah. each his own. That's just my yeah. personal preference. All right, so one clove. Throw that guy in there. And then um, a ton of fresh herbs. So like I said before, the base flavor or the base herb in this guy is basil. I'm gonna put about a cup, um, loosely packed, but I'm just gonna, I'm gonna wing it on this one. Um, you could definitely use a dried herb in this. However, it's gonna be a completely different, um, a completely different dynamic and it'll be much like that traditional Italian restaurant, Italian vinaigrette um, kind of thing. And you really will miss out on all the beautiful, um, like the freshness from these herbs. I like, so there's a, there's a great- uh, I'm making a giant mess over here with these herbs. <laughs> <laughs> there's a great article about uh, adding like boozed ice cream. And I think it depends on how much you want to like have your alcohol, like how, how much alcohol you actually want to carry into the yeah. final base of it. So yeah, if you wanted to have like, so like Carol, to answer your question, like if you're looking to cook for the kids and you want to have like, you know, make it kind of cocktail and whatever, add like the base of a Kahlua or that coffee kind of liqueur, you could cook it out so that it's safe for the kids. But if you just wanted to actually add the coconut rum to a pineapple base, like she's got the base, you could just add that yeah. as it's churning. You just make you just add that in, and you're going to have that alcohol base kind of you know in there as well. You have a little bit of that alcohol burn to it. Um, and I do believe that the alcohol content, I do know this, will depending on how much it is, like the the proof, will um, could potentially change the way it freezes and the way it it could curdle. So you want to make sure that it's, I think after you make the. I, I want to. <laughs> I don't, Carol. I don't know the answer to this. Car I'm going to no, find Car it for you. I want to tell you, Carol's Trust like my. Me. She's like she's killing it tonight on the chat, and I Ugh. love what she's writing. And she wrote something that's so funny. I don't think I can read all, but it's really really great. And I want to say, uh, Carol, if you're ever uh, if you ever down this way and we're allowed to have guests, you are totally going to be one of the first guests that comes out. For sure, you're to invited the, uh, to the live taping because you uh, this is you're hysterical. <laughs> So great. Um, make sure it. you save it because I, I, I'm feeling left she's out in the great, chat. She's, but like, she's like blowing up the chat with like great tips. I mean, literally, she's got some great yes, stuff. Those are gems, Carol. Okay. Keep them coming. So in our blender, I've got a cup of the basil. I've got um, a third of a cup of the mint. I've got um, some of our fresh oregano. Now, fresh oregano has a completely different profile than dried oregano. I love yep. it. It has almost like a light citrus note to it. I'm a huge fan of it. It fresh oregano. When people think of oregano, they think of like, um, you know, like spaghetti, right? Yeah. Pizza. Um, pizza, right? But this, oh, it's so bright and vibrant. And I'm a huge fan of it. I, it's unsung, unsung hero. All right. <clears throat> I've got our blender on low. I'm just going to blend all, all this stuff herbs. up real quick. So as you also know, and the, I'm fresh, add in our olive oil. the fresh herbs like that we get, the fresh herbs using are for Patty's herbs. It's literally the farm that they grow 99% of their herbs on is about 50 miles from our actual headquarters here in San Antonio. So we love to speak the local language. And so when you walk into your local HB, you go into the produce farm and you see those herbs, those are literally farm to table. They're fantastic people and they're great herbs. Add more herbs to everything, sweet and savory. I'm gonna turn it up a little bit. That green color, nice and vibrant. Look at that. We can see into the blender as it's blending. Ooh. I'm gonna season this guy with some salt. A Little bit of salt or the right amount of salt. This is beautiful, it's almost there. I'm gonna add a little bit more in there. Look at that color. Love it. And the flavor, you're going to get all those fresh, vibrant oh, herbs. It's going to be so good. A little bit of garlic, the shallot, the aromatic, the mustard to emulsify. Oh, this is so beautiful. All right, I'm going to give it a taste. Mmm. Yeah, mm. good. Now I'm going to spend the rest of the, the day probably with like a green thing in my teeth. <laughs> this is fantastic. So I'm going to leave that guy there. And I want it to sit for a while out like room temperature um, while I get ready for our salad. The reason why I want this guy to sit is um, 
as it sits, everything just kind of like hangs out and kind of marries with each other and like um, the garlic kind of, it, it mellows out a little bit. and. Um, the, the shallot blooms a little bit. All these different herbs, they all play together. Man, the basil in that and the mint, oh, so wonderful. This is gonna be so good on um, Yeah, they're all hanging the together. Salad. It's like you first go to a party, you don't know anybody, you start talking, everything's a little rigid, yes. right? everything's a little tight, everything's a little, but by the end of the period, you're like, you're all old friends, right? Everything's mingling, everyone's it's friends. mixing. I love, Carol is making so many new friends tonight. Carol. Carol, you better make a lot of, a lot of extras. A lot of people showing up. All right, so um, we're gonna do the um, the salad now. So our strawberry beet and watermelon salad. And um, right here I have, so I have some diced strawberries here. I have some cubed watermelon here. And then I have our, um, our beets. The recipe beets. does say to boil the beets, but um, a couple of shows ago I showed everyone how to um, roast beets very very easy super simple thing to do 350 degree oven some foil olive oil salt pepper you throw these beets in there you close this guy up just like a baked potato right when they're kind fork of when tender. they're soft fork tender take them out let them steam in there a little bit longer and then to um peel that skin off it's super easy you're just going to take a paper towel or like a um, a paper towel or a um a clean uh dish towel and you just kind of with your hands, you just skin wipes right off. The skin comes you, right if off. If you're right? worried, you're not wearing gloves yet. But if you're not, worried about yeah. the beets, will stain your skin for so a little while. So you see that, and it the comes skin just comes but they right will stain. off. Super um, easy. The the thing about roasting, which I love, is that you know you roast everything. So you can boil carrots, you can boil Brussels sprouts, yes. you can boil beets, and they'll get soft. But if you roast them, you're what you're doing in the dry heat is going to help concentrate the sugars, especially Ooh, yes. in the beets, and nice so they words. just give a better overall flavor. I think the boiled beets is fine when you blanch them. I do that when I'm in a hurry. But roasting is definitely Let me grab another the bowl here. Anything roasted. So um, really quickly, sugars. I'm going to show you guys. Let me get this out of the way so you guys have a clean line of sight here. This is going to be a so, colorful summer salad. So is what this is I have be. done so many different versions of this salad. Uh, we did it with stone fruit. We've done it with um, citrus. We've done it with just about anything under the sun. But the watermelon sets it off like I am a huge fan of this um, we've done this recipe for um, some events I'm just a huge fan of this I love the way the the like the the texture the crunch from the watermelon pairs with like the softness and the tenderness of the beets right and the acid from the strawberries oh this is such a complex salad I love it like am I selling this because I really truly love this no I, so, I, I, I love the summertime I have yeah. a love-hate relationship with summer because while I hate summertime and the heat and the humidity I love the summer bounty and the produce summer that summer bounty. brings, which is all this great, these melons, right? like the strawberries, like all that great stuff. So, you know, you got to take advantage of it. And this is a very so, refreshing right? Now, in my, in my recipe, I say to like small dice this, you are not beholden to my direction, right? If you feel like this salad would serve you and your guests better to be in large rustic chunks, do large rustic chunks, right? If you want to showcase the beauty of the strawberries, quarter them. If you want to show the beets, you know, cut them into segments. No, there's no um, right or wrong way to do it. Um, okay, so I'm going to, I just cut the watermelon into large planks and then I'm going to cut it into smaller planks, just like you would a potato, right? Oh, look, it's kind of wonky size. And then I'm just going to cut this into about, just I don't know, cubes. three quarter inch That'll cubes, work. just like that. Bite really size. easy, right? Bite size. Um, you know, not too big. Not too big, not too small, just, you know, see those guys? Just like that, right? So very easy. Again, it was a 20 pound watermelon. Like that guy was huge. Um, for the strawberries, the strawberries are so like these red ripe strawberries. Just if you wanna do a dice on a strawberry, you just do three cuts like that, three or four cuts depending on the strawberry. And then you turn them over and you'll do the same nice going this way. Can y'all see that? Did y'all get a good view of Very that one? Very pretty cut. You did. Rob, had, Rob had a beautiful angle on that. Right? Nice and then we're just going to cut them like this. Right? And then you get these really pretty dice like that. And you can do them smaller if you want. Right? Just like this. I and have then to tell you, if Chef, you I want you to know that I feel better touching all the avocados at HEB when you touched all the watermelons Every at Every watermelon I, feel I held. I validated and feeling like I'm not, it doesn't right? feel, I don't feel as bad. 
See how pretty the water, see like the strawberries look really pretty. So if you wanted to quarter them like that, Those absolutely beautiful. There's no right or wrong way to do it. And then we have our beets. So um, for the beets, same thing, right? Just like we're cutting a potato, just like so. Um, if you don't want to cook your own beets, there's a myriad of canned beets. I bet pickled beets might be pretty good in this salad. You could even do like canned ones. Can beets. Can, can beets. beets work. See, actually, the H-E-B can beets are actually really good. They are pretty good, right? So just like that, right? They look like rubies. They look like jewels. I love them. I, I just love beets. We had a, I'm, I'm, Mike had a question. He said, is, is, okay. and this is, I've never heard of this, so I'm going to say it out loud. All right. This is, the, is slapping a watermelon really how you determine its ripeness? I've never heard of slapping a watermelon. Thumping, people, slapping. People thump it. I don't know what slapping. Carol said earlier, you thump it. I believe it was Carol that said, you thump it to kind of see how juicy it is, and it kind of sounds like hollow or like kind of like a, it sounds like a juiciness. I, I don't know. I, I would say, Mike, if you want to start a trend, maybe you can get on a, somebody's TikTok feed if you're just slapping watermelons at HEB, trying to figure out which one's ripe or not. I think the best way to do it, honestly, is to do, uh, look for a watermelon, whether it's a personal watermelon or a big watermelon, look for something that's a uh, heavy for its size. That's heavy for its size, it. yep. All right. But you know what, Mike? I want you to slap as many watermelon as you can this summer and figure out which ones are more ripe than others. And I want you to tell us the findings because I'd love to be able to say two slaps. Yes. And if like whatever that does is this is a two slap watermelon. Or is it is a three slap watermelon. We just may have invented I think we a whole started new a way thing. to I think we started a thing. <laughs> to, to, to do produce. Okay. So what I'm going to do I'm in, now Mike. I'm all is I'm going to take our vinaigrette and I'm going to dress our arugula. Um, the base of our salad is going to be arugula. And the reason why I use arugula, again, I mean, I'm like the biggest fan of this salad, is because um, I love the texture and I love the pepperiness of it. I'm just gonna add in the vinaigrette. And I'm, I wanna dress my greens because you know when you go to a restaurant and you get this like beautiful salad and everything is like evenly dressed and has this beautiful coating of like beautiful like salad dressing and every bite is perfect. Like that's what I'm doing here. Also like um, please tell me what HEB are gonna be at when you slap all the watermelons because I feel like well, we I think need. Well I think we figured out uh, through the chat that Mike's gonna go, we're gonna find, okay. we're gonna find an HEB to go to, we're gonna meet there. I'm gonna, yes. I'm gonna touch all the avocados, figure out which ones are ripe. Okay. And he's gonna slap all the watermelon and then he's gonna see what the security cameras come okay. up with when they decide to either throw us out or allow us to teach this method to other HEB customers. All right. We'll see. I'm going to add a little bit more of this vinaigrette to our, uh, and some olive oil to our fruit. Look at all that color, man. That's a oh my lot God, of, it's that's so beautiful. Oh, I love this, guys. Look at this. Oh, my God. Can you see how, like, the strawberries and the watermelon and everything, it's just so, it's like a jewel. It's like just a jeweled salad, and I am obsessed. I love it. You could it. stop right there and just hand me that big gold spoon you got yep. over there, and I'm just, I'm will, like, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm good. It, good I love go. it. Okay, I'm going to plate this guy. I'm going to use these gloves. I'm just going to move this out of the way. I'm gonna put my bed of greens here like this. Look, and everything is like coated with that salad dressing, that vinaigrette, and every bite you take is gonna be like just a morsel of like balanced, I wish delicious. every chat, I wish you could, I, Charlotte, I literally, I wish you could read all the chat stuff that's going. I wanna read it to you, but I, I literally, I don't think I'd be able to do it without laughing too hard. Uh, <laughs> I love that, I think this is the way the chat needs to be. Like needs there's to a be. lot of interactive, great tips. There's a part. There's party animals on here. Carol's yes. inviting people over. There's like this is a whole. Oh my god! It's a, whole it's a social thing scene. A thing. I love this. <laughs> I love this. Oh my god! This looks so good. That's oh, awesome. All right. All right. Back to business. So the okay. Arugula, back to business. I, the arugula. I love in this okay. because you get the peppery right? So arugula is yes. very herbaceous. It's very peppery, it is. and I think it with is. all this like pushing and pulling of flavors, it's really, really, it's going to be a great, great mix together. Okay. So now. Burrata, all right? God, we've done so many versions of this. I forgot. There so, was like, it was already good enough as it was. It was, right? Gonna I'm going to make a mess. So burrata is um, packed in liquid, just the way fresh mozzarella is. And usually you get two of them um, per. And I always, I want to lightly dry them off. I got some strawberry stuff on there, so I got them kind of dirty. But um, so that the salad dressing will stick to them if they're wet. If there's water, like the salad dressing won't stick so well. Oh my gosh, those of y'all, y'all can't see what's happening on the other side of this, but they're cracking up at the chat right now. So 
I'm, I'm feeling I'm left out. I'm also cracking up because I, I'm halfway tempted to come grab one of those uh, burratas out of your hand and just so eat So <laughs> they look like poached eggs. So I don't want to completely break this up and completely ruin the integrity, but I want to put them on top of the salad, sort of like the way... Um, there you go. Like, there like, like a cracked egg. So I'm just going to open them up really kind of gently like this and kind of I place them. I think a them. cracked egg wishes it could be this. It wishes it could be burrata. Awesome. And then what I'm going to do is do a little bit of that. Olive oil. That's it. Serve that with a spoon. Al fresco. I love it. Al I love it. All right, quick clean up. And we're going to move to the other thing that we did with our beautiful, whoa, I almost, okay. Is this the cocktail time? Co happy hour. Happy hour time. Happy hour. All right. My blender. That looks really great. That salad is like screaming summer. Okay. Here we go. The beets. I'm also going to grab my ice cream and let this sit out so I to kind of temper because that fruit that you have up there looks a bit cold. Is I like to let frozen? ice cream sit out before I cut it uh, or before I scoop it because I, um, I like it to get kind of soft. I don't want to break my spoon. All right. Yeah, you don't want to struggle when you're doing nah. the, uh, the scoop, nah. right? That's never, never a good thing. All right, guys. Frosé. Watermelon frosé. Now, wait for, now pause for a second because Simple I'm, a, life. I'm, a, I'm a rosé drinker and I want okay. to know what rosé you're using for your frosé. We're using the Simple Life. Okay. Seven ninety-eight. Fantastic. Why don't you pour me a glass? I'll taste it. I'll tell right. you the notes on okay. it, and then we'll okay. uh, proceed with the uh, with the frosé. All right, I will. So you can see, you can see my fruit. Again, twenty-pound watermelon. Couldn't let it go to waste. So what I couldn't eat, um, I chopped up and I froze. Also, the strawberries were so beautiful that I figured, why not use like the fresh ones? Um, Those are frozen, all right. You can hear these that. are I so hear that frozen. Thud in the bottom of the blender. So <laughs> frozen. Um, everybody's gonna have to mute because it's gonna be like no, it's gonna be super great. loud. But we're um, a I'm, I'm gonna do about um, like a cup of strawberries and about two cups of these watermelon chunks. What I love about this frosé is that we aren't adding any water to this. What we're adding is like like all the frozen is coming from the chunks of um, like the chunks of fruit. So yeah, instead there's a of, lot of there's a lot of water, obviously in watermelon. Yes. That's the name. Hey. Well, hey, I see what you did there. I'll be here, all right, I'll be here here's for the our next simple syrup right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add just a couple of like a quarter cup. Well, a quarter cup, a little bit so more. So now you would add just enough of the simple syrup to taste, right? For your sweetness? Right, so for you sweetness. Um, so obviously and to depending get on how sweet mint. your watermelon and strawberries are, you could either add yeah. less or just go with Absolutely. that. Absolutely, absolutely. And then I'm going to take half a bottle of this guy. Let's do, let's not, let's not go short. Don't short anybody. Let's I'm not go, let's short do anybody. the full, you know, no, we got to go the full bottle. Stand by, chef. Stand by. All right. Half a blender. <laughs> fits into this darling little guy. And I think we established also that's a single serving, correct, Single chef? serving, single serving, right? Okay. All right, so I'm gonna turn my blender on high. Okay. This would be the ice crush setting. Here we go, all right? plungers for. I think that needs a little more rosé there, chef. I think that's the what, what that's calling for, a little more rosé. A little more, you think? A little more rosé. Remember that time I broke the blender during that cooking class? <laughs> All right, let's go a little. Like a little more rosé. That's what it's calling for. That's his nature's way of telling okay, you. Okay, here we go. Liquid. Stand by. Watermelon daiquiri. Perfect. Boom. 
We did it, y'all. We did that. it. Look I love it. I love it. Is. I'm super happy about this. You're gonna need a bigger straw that. for that one, Chef. You think we can pour it in here? Oh, come on. There you go. Use your. So what I love about like so using the watermelon and the strawberries, what we do is like we're not diluting the flavor of anything. We're just enhancing, right? So it's like complementary of each other. I'm gonna fill this sucker don't up. Don't be skimpy on me. Fill that up. Fill I want it to. I don't want to make a giant mess. I don't want to spill it. I want the whole. But I'm super want to drink something out of this. I just want to see how much you'll actually fit in that little. <laughs> I told you, <laughs> if it, I don't spill it all over whole everything. Goes in. Oh come on. This was like definitely. Like, so, folks, I'm going to stand by my single serving comment. I think that's a single serving vessel. I think you're right, Chef. I Maybe think a whole pass it around, blender but I goes think in here. Uh, it's a good summertime. Look at this, dude. Vessel. Doing the backstroke in the pool. I love this. <laughs> you could also serve this in. The, I would say if you're like, going to drink something of that size in the pool, have your floaties on while you're doing the backstroke, just in case. Look at that. What? I love that guy. Love that. Okay, one bottle makes, you know, two blenders, all right? So now we're just about done. We've got our, you can also 100% pour a glass of this and that would be absolutely delicious. I mean, we could go like this, look. Uh, Mike had a great tip. He said, leave it in the blender and throw a straw in it. And I think that's a uh, great pro Mike, tip. Mike, you're a genius. And then you can great always just. Great pro tip. Look at that. Now I'm thirsty and hungry. Just have yourself a little, a little cocktail there. I do love right. those. I love those. I love those glasses. So, for our ice cream, I'm super excited about this. It's all coming together. It's all coming together. I've got my ice cream here. Okay, so we got our salad. I got my. I got my. I got my drink. Yep. Now we're on to the. Oh my gosh. Final. Look. That's why you want to use the loaf pan because you get much more scooping surface area. How many scoops do we want, guys? I think it's pretty obvious that six is the normal serving. Scoop, six, right? You is that pretty do, normal? Is okay. that just me? Look is at that this. A, I think so six is the normal. You can see like, oh, it's so beautiful. I Carol says this. three scoops. We'll go more modest. All right. It's swimsuit weather, I guess. One I more. think, Carol, my, my thought, Carol, is that you just, it, six gives you, you don't have to go back for the extras when you finish the three, you're like, maybe just one more. Six just gives you the full rounded. All right, we'll do that. Get that back in there. I'm gonna grab a couple of extra strawberries. Do you know what I'm about to do with this, Tompkins? Do you know, do you know where this is going? What are you gonna do with it? Y'all, isn't this, isn't this bowl cute? I don't know why I think it's so cute, but. It's a great color contrast to the creme fraiche ice cream. Okay. I'm gonna add some strawberries in here. Just like this. We're going to cut up some extra strawberries. A little dice of strawberries over the top. I'm going to put them now all around. Now this is where, for people like Carol, Carol, we're going to go big. We're going to use you as an example. This is where you'd throw your strawberries, your hot fudge, your whipped cream, and then all your caramel sauce right on top of all that. You just throw the whole, everybody in the pool at one time. All right. That's how I would do it. I feel now, like that's, I feel like you're, we're on the same, on the same pathway, wavelength, I feel like. It's healthy because we put fruit on it. Exactly. Okay. And then you drown it in about a, you know, 12 ounces of strawberries cream. in there. And then I'm going to top this with our aged balsamic. Like straight up, just a little drizzle of this aged balsamic on the strawberry. The tartness from the balsamic is going to like, it just pairs so beautifully with like the sour tanginess from the creme fraiche and like the super fatty like richness and then the strawberries. Now somebody oh. may say, now hang, they're like, hang on Charlie, you didn't just put chocolate sauce no on the ice cream. No way. You put balsamic vinegar but to explain that is the really really this sweet is thick balsamic vinegar which is the less aged yep. vinegar right oh, it's, more it's like sweet it's all yes it's almost like like a syrup it's so beautiful i mean i could i could drink it like candy it's absolutely divine Chef, and then question. the last thing from carol carol wants to know what kind of knife are you using um this knife is just a dexter serrated knife um i use all sorts of different um chef's knives it was really honestly what i just grabbed uh, but it's an offset serrated, which any, everyone should have in their kitchen, an offset serrated. I will tell you on Friday, uh, I just saw that came out, Carol. And so if you're going to join us on Friday, Charlotte's got another class we're doing. Yeah. Um, we're going to bring in the K&T knife block stand. So like these, these really cool copper colored knives and they're amazing. And I saw them today and I think they're $49 for a complete K&T knife block set. 
All right, guys, are y'all ready for this? For that. I want to see what happens. Oh, uh, well, it's kind of there. I guess it needs more time. Close. Just need a little more time. Yeah, but it comes with this. Oh, I'm making a mess. You stand like there. But oh, you know what? Look. That's good enough to put over as a as a sauce on something. I'm not mad about it. We would probably let that go a little bit longer. Spoon. Okay, so note to self, it takes a little bit more time. That's not a big deal. I was going to put it in this little coop, but that's it. We're done. We made it. We did it. We made ice cream, y'all. We made a salad with beets. We did simple syrup. We did a lot of stuff done today. I'm super proud of all of y'all. Um, if you missed anything, you can always check out our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash HEB, um, and check out all of the other classes that we have um, in our lineup. And That's right. if you um, are interested in more classes, you can go to hb.com slash classes and um, check out the classes um, that are to come. Chef, I, great job. Thank great, you. Great I'm chat, so great class. We got another one coming up Friday, right? Yes. One more Friday with you. Yes. Any preview of what we're going to, what can expect on Friday? Uh, here, picnic chef? favorites. All right. I may or may not be frying some chicken. I may be making a birthday cake blondie. You should go to h2.com oh, yeah. slash classes and check it out. I'm so glad that you guys chose to spend your evening with me. Thank you so much. Special shout out to Carol for making the chat so much <laughs> fun. It was everybody in the <laughs> chat. Carol was, oh, I think, was I more the, everybody. <laughs> she was just banging the drum. All right. And everybody was just going. I you love guys it, guys. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Have a good evening. Bye. Bye.